Yeah.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eli. Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him, for the Lord does not see all mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. 
And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from the day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 23. Please read the words that are emboldened. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Amen. A lesson from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness. Instead, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake! Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. He must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the, pa the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man called Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? And he said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. And now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. It was your eyes he opened, he said. He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he see now? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that someone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sins and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. 
Jesus heard what, that they had driven him, driven him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? And he answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Be seated, please. That was such a long gospel reading. <laughs> Do you even remember the beginning of it? <laughs> Let me just start by saying this. Next time you talk to God, avoid asking an either or question. <laughs> That's what happened to the disciples. Jesus was walking along and, and they saw this man that was born blind sitting beside the road begging and, and the disciples said, who was the sinner? This man born blind or his parents? Either or, because we're already operating out of the assumption that his blindness is because of sin. That's what we've been taught, that's what we know, so that's fine. Now here's the question, whose sin was it? Those either or questions sometimes are very useful. We have certain poles that we, we think about, black and white, truth, falsehood, right, wrong, less than, greater than, or equal in mathematics. That's dualistic thinking, and it does serve a purpose. Sometimes it's the appropriate way to approach a problem. But like the carpenter who had only a hammer in his tool bag, after a while everything starts looking like a nail. <laughs> and we live in a world that is beset with dualistic thinking. Simply watch the evening news and you will see it over and over and over again. We have become obsessed with dualistic thinking. And it has its shortcomings because eventually, if that's the only tool in your tool bag, your worldview will narrow and narrow and narrow. We have to exercise another way of thinking, a non-dualistic way of thinking. And that's what Jesus did in today's gospel. They asked him an either or question. And he gave an answer kind of like a four-year-old when you say, do you want broccoli or spinach for your dinner? <laughs> you know the answer. I want a great big red juicy strawberry. Somehow from the age of four to adulthood, we lose that ability 
to fall into the trap of dualistic thinking. So a, a gospel like today's is really handy for us to make sense of it. So I want to retell the gospel a little bit, not the whole thing. <laughs> Man born blind suddenly sees. And they ask him, how is it that you see? And he says to them, think in terms of this being a musical play, okay? He says to them, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. And they said to Amazing Grace, how can that be? And they argued among themselves, is this even the, the man who was born blind? Or is it somebody that just looks like him? So they called in the Pharisees. The Pharisees. Now imagine music and the Pharisees marching in to a mighty fortress is our God. <laughs> a mighty fortress is our God comes and, and questions amazing grace. How is it that you can see? And amazing grace, grace says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, who saved a wretch like me, for once I was blind and now I see. But that can't be it, says a mighty fortress. There's got to be something else. Get, get this man's parents in here. So they call the parents and they question them. And the parents know probably through experience with a disabled child, that telling truth to power will rarely get you where you want to be. So what do they do? Well, he's an adult now, so they threw him under the bus. <laughs> yes, this is our son. Yes, he was blind. Yes, he can now see. We don't know how that happened, but he's an adult, so go ask him. So once again, a mighty, mighty fortress is our God comes to amazing grace and says to him, explain one more time how this happened. He says, well, it was on the Sabbath and I was blind and now I see. What, what else do you need to know? And a mighty fortress says, on the Sabbath? On the Sabbath? Nobody who is in good standing with God works on the Sabbath. He must be someone who is evil. Because this doesn't add up. And once again, amazing grace challenges him and says, how is it that you're teachers and you can't grasp this simple thing? I was once lost. Now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And a mighty fortress responded by saying, you, a sinner, are going to teach us? And they grabbed him by the scruff of his neck, and they threw him out of the temple and slammed the door behind them. Isn't that how you heard it? That's how I heard it. But the story's not over. It's not over. Because Jesus hears, I just lost my page number. Oh, well. Uh, Jesus hears. And he comes. And he sits down with amazing grace. And in the finale of this this 
a musical, they start singing a song. It starts off with Amazing Grace singing. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. Then Jesus joins in and it becomes a duet. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. The curtain comes down. They do some other stuff and then they go out in the parish hall and have coffee. (laughs) Except one young person maybe a small boy, maybe it was a girl, says, all right, but wait a minute, I have a question here. I have a question here. How do you walk like a child of the light? Everything you've said is all well and good, but how do you do it? Well, that's not a dualistic question, is it? So what's the answer? Let me tell you a brief story. There's a man on vacation, sitting in a chair on the sand by the ocean, watching the waves come in and out, and suddenly he looked down and realized that high tide had passed, and as the waves went out, they were leaving starfish stuck on the sand. Some of you have heard this story. I see you nodding already. Don't ruin it for the rest of them. (laughs) There's hundreds of them, maybe thousands. And he knows that by the time the tide comes in, they will have fried. Now the corner of his eye, he sees this little girl walking down the, the beach. She's bending over and picking things up and tossing them in the water. She walks a few more steps and she bends over and she picks up another one and tosses it in the water. And eventually she works herself up to where the man is. And he says, child. Now child was her first name. Her full full name is child of the light. (laughs) He says, child, don't you know that there are hundreds, maybe thousands of starfish on this beach, and you're throwing a few of them back in, in the grand scheme of things, isn't gonna make any difference. And the little girl bends down, picks up another starfish, throws it into the water, looks the man right in the eye, and says, I made a difference for that one. Amen. Standing as you are able, let us confess our faith together through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son.
Let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. Blessed are you, eternal God. To be praised and glorified forever. Creator of all, hear us as we pray for the unity of the church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. The life of Christ may be revealed in us. We remember those who have died. Remembering. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into your eternal glory. Have compassion on those who suffer from sickness, grief, or trouble. In your presence, may they find strength. Look with your kindness on our homes and families. Grant that your love may grow in our hearts. We pray that those who make decisions about the resources of the earth that may use your gifts make us alive to the needs of our community. Inspire and lead those who hold authority in the nations of the world. Guide us and all people in the way of justice and peace. Strengthen all who minister in Christ's name. Give us courage to proclaim your gospel. We pray in silence for our own needs. God, our hope, may your blessing empower our thanksgivings and our prayer. For we put our trust in you, the living God, risking disappointment, risking failure, working and waiting expectantly. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
As part of our blessing of offerings this morning, I wish to offer up a prayer of thanksgiving and blessing upon these, these gifts of clothing and socks and many other things that will go towards our support of those who get their support through St. Francis Center in Denver. Let us pray. Gracious God, we know that there is great need in our world. We know that such need can feel overwhelming, too much. And we also know that the beginning of the meeting of needs comes through small actions, individual people, sometimes even one-off gifts that may not change the entire world of need, but will indeed make a change and a difference to individuals, to those who bear these socks on cold nights, to those who will wear these jeans when all they have are tattered clothes, for those for whom may never know who gave these gifts, but for whom will be grateful to know that there is someone many someones who care for them, who love them. And we know that through these gifts, they become a sign of your love for us and through us, to our neighbor, to the unhoused, to the underhoused. And so we ask your blessing to be upon these items, that they indeed, through the warmth that they bring, may be a blessing to others. And we pray these things and give thanks for all things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who walked this earth and bore our sins to forgive us and to heal us and to make us whole. Amen. We continue on page 361, page 361 of the Red Books of Common Prayer in the pew rack in front of you, page 361. The Lord be with you. Also be Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. That in fervent prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. love you made us for yourself and when we'd fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal son to share our human nature to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of God for the people of God, the holy things for the holy ones.
Our prayer after communion, our post-communion prayer, is found on page 8 of our bulletins, page 8 of our bulletins. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. Very good morning to each and every one of you. Particularly, good morning, thank you, yes. <laughs> For those gathered here in the physical space of the church and those joining us in the digital spaces of Zoom, it is good to be with you, good to be gathered here as God's people. Thank you to Father Kelsey for another wonderful and inviting and challenging sermon. And I hope you see the connections he was making, undoubtedly, um, about the life that we have with God and with one another. It's full of intrigue, it's full of wonder, full of challenge, uh, but most of all, it's full of love. So thank you, Father Kelsey, for inviting us once again to consider such things. We remain in the season of Lent just for a few more weeks, and so our Lenten practices uh, that we are hosting here in the church continue this week. Our quiet morning on Wednesday from 10 a.m. to noon. A short service of Eucharist right around noontime here in the sanctuary. And then on Fridays at noon, the Stations of the Cross that are being sponsored and led by the Daughters of the King. We also have our ongoing Lenten recital series and this coming Friday, John Mergel, who is familiar to many of us as being a former organist here himself, will be our guest. Information about the Lenten practices and the, the recital series are all in your bulletin, so I do encourage you to take that with you. Also, they go out as part of our Thursday morning e-news. If you are on our email list, you would have got an email early Friday morning inviting you to be part of a parish meeting next Sunday, March 26th, next Sunday following the 9.30 service. We will meet here in the sanctuary after a short break at the end of the service so we can just have a few moments to set some things up. It is an opportunity to hear back about our listening sessions and what we heard as well as what the next steps might look like. So next Sunday, March 26, parish meeting here following the service. We will have it on Zoom and it will be recorded as well. I know there's been a number of requests for that because of travels, etc. So next Sunday. You can get your tickets today uh, in McGlaris for our Grace, Gratitude and, and Grub evening coming up, our parish night of fun and fundraising coming up at the end of April. Tickets are available in McGlaris Hall. Please grab yours while you can. It promises to be a wonderful opportunity not only to have some fun together, but to also invest in our life together, as I know we already do, but in a special way through the auction items. More information in your bulletin as well as when you get your tickets today. Holy Week is coming. So is Christmas, so <laughs> get ready. No. Holy Week is, uh, is coming up in two weeks with Palm Sunday, and of course our services of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. And just to keep us on our toes, uh, there are a number of pieces to our Holy Week 
particularly timing and in regards to Palm Sunday, where we will be gathering elsewhere. So here's the quick breakdown. Uh, the information's in your bulletin as well, and we'll be, of course, um, talking a lot more about that in the next couple of weeks. Palm Sunday, 9 a.m., 9 a.m., and we begin with doing, we begin with our Lutheran uh, brothers and sisters and siblings just down the street, Lutheran Church of Hope, for we will join with them to do the Liturgy of the Palms. So if you are able to join us, uh, please do join us there at 9 a.m. on Palm Sunday. We will, you of course are welcome to gather here in the church at 9 a.m. There will be a service of, of blessing of the palms as well here in the sanctuary. But if you're able, I invite you to join us, weather permitting of course, uh, down at Lutheran Church of Hope for our combined liturgy of the palms. And we will then process back here for the remainder of the service. Monday, Thursday, uh, and Good Friday, both services are at 7 p.m., 7 p.m. And I do invite you to, as much as you're able, to, be, to join us for all these holy days, the tritium, the three holy days of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. And speaking of Easter, we will have two services on Easter morning, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. 8 a.m. for a more simplified dignified and joyous service, 10 a.m. with the full choir, a more choral experience uh, of a service of Easter. So please mark your calendars and uh, mark the times, because it's always tricky, right? Mark the times, particularly 9 a.m. Palm Sunday, 8 or 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday. And finally, um, Connect cards, if you are new, visiting, or interested in, in communicating uh, with the office, um, particularly if we don't have your contact information, uh, Connect cards are a great way to do that. They're in the pew rack in front of you. For those joining us on Zoom, there is a digital version of the Connect cards on our website. So whether you are joining us in person or digitally and you haven't yet filled out a Connect card, I do invite you to do so. It provides an avenue for us to communicate with you and to allow you then to also get the e-news and other uh, communications from, from the parish. Right. Love you to see you all. Let us now stand and we'll sing our concluding hymn. <laughs> Bless the Lord.